Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. A few weeks ago, I made a video about diagnosing magneto problems on my Farm All H. And at the end of the video, I had to swap in uh, magneto off my Super A to get the H running. Well, after that video, I ordered a used battery ignition unit or distributor from eBay. And in this video, I'm going to show disassembling, evaluating, and cleaning that old distributor to get it ready to put on the H. This is a two-part series, so after this video, I'll be following up with another video that shows painting, reassembling, and installation back on the H and getting her running. Of course, when you order something used off eBay, you look at the pictures they put up, but there's no assurance that the thing is in great condition. So, the first thing to do is unpack what I had ordered, and it cost me about $75 for this old unit. Now it's time to take everything apart and see what needs fixing. I checked the cam that the rotor mounts to for play. Too much side-to-side -side play and too much end-to-end -to -end play in these can make the tractor run rough as it results in an inconsistent points gap and inconsistent ignition timing. The cam has some play, but I think it'll be okay. The only cure for this play really is to buy a brand new distributor. There are no bushings to replace to tighten up the cam. I checked the drive shaft for play and it's tight. If it had play, there's a bushing inside that can be replaced. The drive gear and drive end look good. There's no wear on the gear teeth, and that drive end can have some wear on that T-shaped end, but this looks fine. Now I take the points and condenser out. They look almost new. There's a lot of points and condensers on the market now that are of really questionable quality. So I'm going to replace them with a, what I know is a good set and keep the ones that come out as spares. I take the breaker plate off to expose the timing advance mechanism. There's another plate under that which helps keep the advance weights in place and I take that off too. I take the timing advance springs off, then pull the cam off and take the weights out. I also check the high points of the cam for wear. To get the drive gear off the distributor shaft, I have to remove a pin that holds it in place. To get the pin out, I put the assembly in a vise and drive it out with a punch. The washers that are on the shaft are to limit shaft end play, and I need to save those and put them in when I'm reassembling. Now 
The drive housing is full of old smelly grease. There's nothing like the smell of 75 year old grease. It has its own unique aroma. It's going to need a thorough cleaning, as are all the parts. Cleaning the parts starts with brushing them off in the parts washer. This gets oil and some of the hardened grease and dirt off. Then I use a combination of a wire brush on a bench grinder, a brush on a drill, and a Dremel to get the rest of the hardened grease and paint off. This is one of my least favorite jobs about restoring old equipment, but I really enjoy reassembling clean, freshly painted parts. When it's time to clean the timing advance mechanism, I take a closer look at it. The studs that hold the weights are worn, and one of them is bent and loose. I put the assembly back together to see how much play everything has. It's worn, but I think it'll be okay. I'm not fixing a Porsche here. It's an old tractor. But I'm going to have to fabricate a new stud to replace the one that's badly bent and worn. I use a cutoff disc on the Dremel to grind off the riveted end of the stud and pull it out. Making a new stud is going to require a farmer fix. I don't have a machine shop, so I'm going to fabricate a new stud with what I have on hand. I use a pair of calipers to measure the stud's diameter, then find a screw with a little bit larger diameter. I chuck the screw into the drill press and use a file to remove the threads. The threads up inside the drill chuck will remain on the screw, and that's part of the plan. Then I drill out the hole from the original stud to accept a thread tap the same size as the screw threads. And tap threads into the hole. I thread the screw in, but it's too loose in the threads. It wobbles back and forth like the original stud did. So I cut off the screw head, thread it into the plate, and weld it to the plate from the underside. Then I grind the weld down so it won't interfere with the distributor housing. and I cut it to the correct length. Next I grind a groove near the top to hold the spring. It looks pretty good. I reassemble the advance mechanism to make sure everything fits properly, and it does. Problem solved. Here's a really simple explanation of how timing advance works in a distributor. So I have the distributor housing empty, and here is the, the advance mechanism. It goes in the distributor housing, as you've seen in the video like this, and when I turn it, what happens is there's centrifugal force generated by the spinning that makes the weights move outward. So let me take this back out. So the whole thing's spinning, the weights move outward, and when the weights move outward, these little arms on the back side of the weight push on this that's connected to this cam shaft here. So this cam shaft is separate from the drive shaft that drives the distributor around, and when the weights are flying outward, when the tractor motor is running fast, see it changes the relationship of the cam to the shaft here. So you have the points riding on this cam, and when the points open and close, that's what determines when the spark plug fires, is the points are riding on these and hit these points, they open up. So you're changing 
the time at which the points fire. Now on an H, the advance is about 40 degrees off of regular, so it doesn't look like 40 degrees here, but when you work back through the engine drive chain, that's how much the timing is advanced on the crankshaft pulley. So it's a real simple mechanism. This is looser than I would like, and the springs are, they're okay. Like I said, this isn't a Porsche, it's an H from 1940, so I think it'll run fine if I have problems once I get it in. I do have a source to get new springs for this, and that'll tighten it up quite a bit. Having fixed the issue with the timing advance, I clean up the rest of the parts. I need three replacement gaskets. I've found it's cheaper and easier to make my own gaskets out of rolled gasket material. And if you go to any auto shop, you can find it in different thicknesses and compositions. I use the old gaskets or the parts that the new gaskets need to fit to as a pattern for making the gaskets. Here are all the parts cleaned up, and I really like working with nice clean parts with all the gunk and grease removed, and I can really see what I'm working with. And on things like this, when you clean them up, you can make sure that everything is in good shape and not worn, and there's nothing worse with, than working with old greasy parts and trying to get them together, and cleanliness is important in a distributor. So everything's ready to go now. In the next video, I'm going to show painting these parts getting everything together and getting all the new parts like cap and rotor and coil and all that stuff in and then I'll put it on the H and we'll see if she starts. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.